Great, thanks. Again, welcome everybody to the User Experience Roundtable kickoff. Uh, my name is Keith Instone. I'm wearing my World Usability Day 2006 t-shirt today. I wear it about once a year because that's how it lasts this long um, for special events like this. Um, yeah, again, thanks for introducing yourself in the chat. We really want to just sort of uh, use this to meet some more folks interested in user experience across the state of Ohio, uh, different folks that are collaborating on things already, um, hoping that we can do some more things together as, as a unit of, of groups across the state uh, and helping the Ohio X mission of doing things like raising awareness of careers and in, improving the capabilities and in professionalization. So welcome again and again we'll keep this pretty informal and pretty lightweight so stop me and interject as we go along so whoops i wanted to first start with um a little bit of discussion about user experience communities across the state of ohio um over the years some of you might be new to user experience some of you may be members of these groups or leaders of these groups um i'm in toledo and i started coming down to columbus for buckeye about two or three times a year back in the 1990s like 1999 probably or early 2000 i can't remember now um so so we, so we had we had some ux groups uh forming way back then um Nowadays, we have active interaction design association groups in Columbus and Cincinnati. You can see logos for UX Akron and Ladies That UX. Uh, UXPA is active. Um, I used to do some things in the Toledo area where I would leverage Rosenfeld Media Conference uh, content, and we would like to have an event at the Art Museum where we just watched Rosenfeld Media events online. Um, in the upper right hand corner is a cake from World Usability Day 2008. So I was, I think I, it might have been at Key Bank that year, but I, I went and I was on a panel. So I went to Cleveland, participated in the event. Neopa, Neo, Neopa was the name of the event back then, the Northeast Ohio Usability Professional Association. But again, back in 2008, we were getting together, having conferences, uh, having cake right and so so having cake and i remember that the cake was delicious but i took a picture in part because um it sort of symbolizes where we were at that point right it's, it's a great cake somebody decorated it with the globe the logo for world usability day but then uh they misspelled the word 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 world right so in the bottom left so like hey we're, we're making cake uh it's great that we had a cake let's keep making let's keep keep making even better cakes um or Jello or whatever else we want to we want to make. Um, some other groups mentioned around the circle, like Interaction Design Foundation. We have some local groups. A lot of uh, AIGA chapters in the in the state that are professional uh, uh, graphic designers. Uh, how many folks here were at Midwest UX 2012 when it was at COSI, right? So that was a big event. This, this was like, again, I told people like this, I've been to lots of events on the East Coast and the West Coast UX conferences around the world. This one as, was as good, if not better than all of those. And it was right here in Columbus. Um, those, those Midwest UX aren't going on. We almost had another one in Columbus, but then the pandemic hit. Um, but we also have like groups at Kent that were part of World IA Day happening every year. Uh, UX Akron has hosted it in the past. And again, um, I've made trips to Cleveland, Columbus to hang out with industrial designers, all, all part of the user experience family in my group. So again, these are some of the groups that are active. These are the people that I've been hanging out with over the past 20 years or so. And these are some of the groups that um, are helping us get this UX roundtable started. Um, and then, you know, in, in the middle is a picture from the World Usability Day event in Cleveland from 2019, I think, right? So some of you, some of you are in, in that picture. Um, so again, just to represent, this is sort of the community of the user experience community folks as I know it. Um, I want to pause a little bit, like, are there some more things that people from these groups want to mention? Did I miss some other groups? What other groups are forming? So let's just pause for a second to talk about the user experience community across the state. I'll drop uh, UX Akron information into the chat. So if people would like to connect and see what's happening, they can do so. As I said, this is Mark. There's so many great meetups and so many organizations out there that I know during the pandemic has seen an, just an uptick just because I can drop in to Wyoming or you know, uh, within some other place within Ohio as well. So I know it's definitely, there's some new ones out there, but as Keith said, I think you did a great 
re, uh, kind of history of everything that at least you have a good representation here on the screen. Cool. And we Great. will be yeah. hosting World IA Day yet again next year. So. Uh, which will be in the spring, right? I, I think they've had yes. the call. First the call weekend for in community. March. Okay, first weekend in March. And that, who is that? Uh, UX Akron will be will be okay. hosting. Okay, again great, this year. cool, good. Um, any other little comments from the community? Uh, this is Joshua. I dropped in the chat the link to UXPA.org, the User Experience Professionals Association. As Mark said, you know, one of the benefits of COVID is that organizations are now a lot more open about sharing content and not batting it eye if you want to attend a UXPA meeting in you know Dusseldorf uh, on your Zoom. So check it out. There's a lot of good stuff there. Cool. So yeah, so this is sort of the the the, the foundation of it. I want to transition to a little bit of as some of us have worked together on various things and learned about this Ohio X organization. Uh, we found some value in partnering with Ohio X, supporting Ohio X, and being part of Ohio X. Um, Chris Berry is the CEO of Ohio X, and something came up for him at the last minute. He can't join us right now, so I'll talk a little bit about Ohio X. But um, uh, there, one thing that makes Ohio X different is that they're a trade association, right? So their members are are companies, right? They're 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 you know like Facebook, the, the Facebook in Ohio is or, or Meta is is a member, AT and T, um, a lot of local companies in Ohio are members. So the idea is that these companies join Ohio X to help them accomplish their goals. And there's various committees and events that Ohio X, organ Ohio X organizes. Um, recently, they had a, a health tech summit and a gov tech summit, right? So a chance to get people together across the state talking about those. Um, and uh, one of the, the sort of the way they their main mission is they want to grow Ohio's economy through technology and innovation. Right. So if we think of that one, again, they spend a lot of time talking to software developers and who's developed, you know, who are the startups developing AI things in Ohio and, and helping promote that and helping make that happen. Um, but when I looked at Ohio X, I thought, well, if if we have all these Ohio based companies and we want to grow the economy, we want to make them more successful. You know, in, in my view, of course, I'm biased that I think if we can help all these companies in Ohio create more innovative experiences for their users, they will be successful. They will hire more people. They will their stock price will go up. They will um, uh, create new products. And so again, Kroger, Nationwide, Progressive, all the big companies. If you know, or if, if we can help that AI startup, right, create good ethical AI stuff, they'll be more successful, and they'll, you know, they'll then acquire some Silicon Valley. AI startup in a perfect world. And we'll, you know, we'll have some of those companies here and they'll, they'll be based in Ohio, they'll pay taxes, they'll recruit our students and things like that. So to me, that's, there's like lots of other reasons I think we can contribute to Ohio X. But for me, that's that main thing. If, if we can help companies in Ohio be better at user experience, then our economy will prosper and um, other good things will happen. So thanks for sharing a link to the website, Joshua. Um, anybody else want to add some comments about Ohio X or other things going on or, uh, you know, we, we can, I can answer some questions on their behalf while we're here. Their, their events have been great and I've been able to meet a whole bunch of cool people from a lot of different, different backgrounds at them. So I encourage everybody what Keith, they've got their next tech summit scheduled already for May next year. Um, I'd pencil it in on the calendar because there was a lot of value that I found in the last one for sure. Yeah, I would encourage people to sign up for their newsletter because that is just a wealth of information and it keeps you fully informed about everything that's coming up through Ohio X and they're always adding new, new things. So stay informed with their newsletter. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So yeah. So Mike, Michael, you, I, I saw you there at the, the, the first tech summit that they had at John Carroll. And then the next one's going to be at Ohio State in May. And so one would be just to attend because there'll be interesting things going on. But we as you as a UX roundtable, like maybe we could organize some event. Maybe we, we, we could have one session at the at the tech summit that we're in charge of. Or maybe we just decide to hang out there. And while we're there attending that event, we could do some UX. You know, let's let's do a pub crawl afterwards or whatever with our UX colleagues or something like that. Keith, will you... Uh 
kind of explain the the round table component of Ohio X? Sure. Yeah. Good. 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 Yeah. So Ohio X does different events, um, different sort. You know, they have committees like they have a workforce development committee and some other things. The idea behind a roundtable is to pick to pick to pick a profession and let them hang out as a group as part of Ohio X. So there's already a Marcom roundtable, and there's already a product management roundtable. Um, that different folks lead, right? So it's it's a different way of organizing um, w within the community. So it sort of let like it lets us work across other things. So um, uh, so that's sort of the general idea for a roundtable. And then you know when I asked Chris Berry like like what exactly should a roundtable be, he said whatever you guys want it to be, right? So there's a lot you know that's sort of the general framework for a roundtable. Um, but you know we don't there's a lot of freedom for us if, if we want to if we want to do something it's not like Chris to say sorry you can't that's not what a round table is allowed to do right so um so that's where when we get into some of those things of some of these goals that we have then um you know we can use Ohio X to help us accomplish those goals and uh, I think that will line up with some of Ohio X goals so right so that's the idea behind a round table um I think in, the Keith the other benefit of the uh, you know, Ohio X UX round table. That's a lot of X's. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, is, uh, you know, we, we have uh, from your previous slide, an awesome number of local chapters and local organizations just within Ohio, but we haven't really had much success collaborating across the state. Um, so that's one of the other ways we're hoping that the UX round table within Ohio X can be beneficial is by bringing us outside of our local shells to work statewide while we also continue to work locally on whatever local issues are. Right. So I, I had I had some email responses. Like when I sent the email this morning, somebody said, oh, I can't make it. But like one person was, I just moved from the West Coast to Ohio. I just want to hang out with other UX people. Right. So in this case, I'm happy as as the round table, we'll just like you're in Columbus, don't, you know, go to the next pancake breakfast that IXDA Columbus is doing, right? So we're not trying to replace any of these things. We're just trying to add on to it where if if UX Akron and uh, the IXDA Cincinnati both want to do something for World Eye Day, maybe they do them separately or maybe they do them together, right? And so if we can help facilitate some of those things, I think that 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 may release some of the pressure because it, it's a lot of work to keep to keep a local group going, right? So it's like, hey, I can take a month off, but the folks in Akron will fill in for me, right? Or vice versa. Um, and then we can also have, you know, we can do we can accomplish more if we do them together. So so to me, it'd be like, hey, you know, out of all the world IA Day events happening around the world, I want the ones in Ohio to be the best, right? It's like, hey, the rest of the world, we we can do IA great here. Our you know our IA events are great. Right. So again, in any way that we can help help these local groups be more successful, um, that's that's one of the goals as well. We just didn't list that explicitly. That just sort of comes along the way as we do everything else. Cool. Anything else that you want to sort of talk about it at this point? Any sort of general questions around why the heck we're here? And part of it is they might say, "Well, I still don't get why we're here." Keith is like, "I don't know either." Right? We're just here, <laughs> so let's figure it out together. Um, so let's move on a little bit. So again, when, when I look at more of, as we've been gathering together as a user experience community, we've been talking about things like, um, like, uh, career awareness and so on. So, so in order for Ohio X to be successful, I see, you know, these Ohio based companies have to be successful, but then we also have to have a great workforce. So, you know, a great workforce in general, but, you know, and so there's a lot of attention on software development boot camps. So like, that's great. Let's make sure we have the best, you know, user experience workforce in Ohio, living in Ohio, working for folks in Ohio. And then of course, you know, in the long play, it's like, it talents, right? You know, how do, how do we get young people to even realize that, that, that these kind of jobs exist, that this is something that they can do that, you, you know, you, you love spending time on your phone. That is, it isn't magic that things, you know, that software is actually easy to use on your phone. It's not magic, right? It, it takes work. And that could be something that you could actually get paid to do if you wanted to, to do that. And I would, I would say if you wanted to grow up and do that, but you could also just stay young and do that. Um, <laughs> so, but again, the idea being that, that the, these added things are needed. And so when we, we you know, the, some of us early folks were talking about, well, you know, there's some things that we think as a Ohio UX community 
you know, things would be basically the things that we complain about, right? What are the three things we complain about? One is our bosses don't get UX and they don't invest enough money in it, right? We have one user researcher and we should have five, right? So that's this UX capabilities goal of like, let's help these companies grow their UX team or get better at user experience so that like, I don't have to argue for a user research budget. It just comes to me because you know, because our bosses get it, our companies get it, our bosses, uh, you know, so this sort of gets more on the management side, and it might be called customer experience management or employee experience management. But that's one of our goals, like, let's improve these capabilities. That will be good for Ohio, but it's also going to be good for us, right? Um, then the second level is around professionalization. And that's more like helping us as individuals, how do we get better at doing it, right? Even if, if we're not going to work for an Ohio based company, how do we pick up more skills? How do we perhaps collaborate with academia in order to have better, you know, Kent State is a great program, but, you know, what, what other programs could we help out with? Um, maybe we need some sort of certification, right? And so, you know, certification actually happens in the U.S. It happens at the, the, the state level, right? If the state of Ohio could could require certain types of certifications, that doesn't happen at the national level in, in the U.S. So, so perhaps we need to lobby people in Columbus about something for, for our professionalization. Um, and then the, the third is more the, the future thing, right? How do we talk to kids, kids still in school or uh, even people that want to switch careers about career awareness that we exist? So these are sort of our three ideas for starting point for capabilities. And we sort of have some captains of the team. I've covered a little bit, but um, Joshua, Melanie, and Mark, do you want to talk a little bit more about these areas too? Sure. Uh, so, uh, hey, everyone, I'm Joshua Randall. By day, I am a product designer at RevLocal, which is a digital marketing company based in Columbus, although I work out of my home in Cleveland. And I'm the captain of the professionalization team. Definitely looking for more people to join me. As Keith said, you know, what does any of this mean? What does professionalization mean? We'll figure it out. I think as a starting point, I look at some long-term goals like establishing agreed upon UX qualifications, uh, working with academic institutions and with industry to formalize what it means to be a trained UX designer in a broad sense, and kind of to promote UX as a profession that's on par with any other skilled profession. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, please, please reach out to me. We'll work on it. That sounds hard and ambitious, Joshua. Uh, yes, I think it's worthy. I think it definitely it's something that many of us in this profession have talked about for a while. I'm Mark Majors. I'm heading up the UX capabilities as the captain. And really, this one is centered around the UX maturity of your organization. So are you starting from creating advocates at your organization and just trying to get user experience off the ground? Or are you actually running user experience and you want to understand the best way to merge that entry development life cycle? And then if you are adventurous and you're down that far, how do you keep it running? And what's some of the sustainability around that as well? So join us to talk about UX capabilities when you get an opportunity during this session. And hello, everybody. I'm Melanie Bazzelli with UX Akron and the, I'm the captain of the career awareness group. And basically our goal here is to, to build awareness of UX careers for high school and middle school students so that they know what kind of careers are available in UX and where to obtain education and training in Ohio. You know, we'd like this workforce to be fantastic and, and stay and live and work in Ohio. So we are interested in teaming up with schools, colleges, universities, and also young UX professionals just getting started in their careers. So welcome and join the uh, career awareness section. And we have something concrete, I mean, something specific. You wanna talk a little bit about that, Please, Melanie? September 30th, we are gearing up for Ohio Tech Day, which is a, a second year yearly event now through Ohio X. And we are in the process of interviewing some UX professionals that are early in their career, five years or less of experience. We are hoping to expand this initiative beyond Tech Day and be interviewing young professionals throughout the year and highlighting and showcasing them through any number of online social channels through Ohio X, of course, 
also through some of the local organizations that you know they might be in the same area as. So you know, spread the word that we are interested in talking to people with five years or less of experience in a UX role, because we would be delighted to learn more about how they got started, how they found out about UX as a career path, and you know where they see themselves growing in the future. Great, right? So that's an example where Ohio X was already doing this tech day, right? They were, you know, focusing on software development, AI jobs, other things. And we said, hey, could we could we feature UX jobs as well as tech day? And they said, of course. And so last year we 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 you know we we did a little webinar doing it, and that was sort of like a test run of of collaborating across the state and doing something with Ohio X. And again, the nice part is if if we just sort of join their bandwagon, they'll do some of the promotion. And so again, there's there's you know, changes coming in in K through 12 where, you know, I don't completely understand it, but like teachers are going to be required to do some career education as part of their thing. And so like, we just want to have a, a bunch of videos available. Like you got 15 minutes to do some career education in your, in your art class or in your, your finance class or whatever, like go to the, the Ohio X website, find a couple videos and play it. It might be a software developer. It could be something else, but we want to have a UX job video waiting there for them right as opposed to us doing all this work you know and trying to like find all those teachers to have them find our videos that's going to be that's too hard for us to reach out to all the schools but if we tag along with ohio x they'll 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 help us reach the people that we want to reach so cool let's any other questions or conversations at this point we're we're right at the halfway point i know some people emailed me that they have to leave at 12 30 right so we're sort of like if you just wanted to come and listen this this is sort of the first first part of it. The second half is I don't want to talk anymore, right? I want everybody else to be chiming in, asking questions. Uh, we can join into we, we can join into breakout groups and things like that if we want. So this is sort of going to be the, the second half of it. So I'm going to pause here and get a drink. And you guys tell me what you want to do next. We have the uh capability to put ourselves in breakout rooms based on these topics if we want to or there's 37 people on that's a pretty big group but if we're disciplined we maybe can just discuss as one big group and with that joshua the ability you could jump from one to the next as you like as well Yeah, so if you could find the breakout room feature, right? There's a list. We've got six of them started, including uh, something else. Folks, okay with picking one of the one of the breakout groups and joining it for ten or fifteen minutes, and then we'll see how it goes. We might all join back, and then split out into breakout groups again, or uh, we, no. could, you know, we could do a second round, but. We've Break got up. them. Let's use them. I'll, I'll head okay. over to the professionalization right. room for folks who want to talk about yep. that. I'll be in career yeah. awareness. So join me there if you'd like. And I'm heading to UX capabilities. See okay. You. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can join the UX communities one. If somebody wants to talk about the Humane Tech Hub, we could hang out there. Any nominations for something else? So... I will go ahead and head over to the something else and uh, see what happens. Okay, <laughs> great. I'm going to speak up here for a quick second. So hi, everyone. I'm Rochelle Hippler, and I'm at Baum Wallace University. And I guess I am one of the few um, academics on this call. And so eager to um, engage with you all in the professionalization category. We have a UX research lab on our campus. And we are just starting to grow our curriculum. So looking forward to everybody's input. Cool. We'll let some more folks decide if they want to join or if they just want to, if they're non-committal, then we'll just hang out in the large group, right? If enough people leave, then we now have a small enough group here in the main group. So any other questions or things to even help you decide which group you want to go into? 
I'm I'm here for you, Keith. So I'm going to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we've got Bryce and Matthew over in the Humane Tech Hub. Um, it looks like Chris joined the UX communities. In case anybody want to learn about the current communities with Chris, who's in Cincinnati. Um, Hi all, thanks for coming back. So Chris, I noticed you had about four or five people in your room. Yes, there was a question. Um, do, you, do you have a list or know of a list of all the communities in Ohio related to user experience? I have a list that it's probably out of date, but yes, <laughs> I, I have a various lists. It was around. me, it was me, that's, blame me. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> That's I fine. usually just go to you, so I, right. I, I figured you just had Toledo only. So yeah, so that would be that's that's a good list to compile, right? So <laughs> um, we'll we'll start making that list, and again, trying to find a good place for it. To me, it's like let's add it to the Ohio X website so people can find it, right? So yeah, so that's that's We're back, a list. Keith. Hey, great! Thanks okay. for coming back. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate it. Yep. So thanks for hanging around. Thanks for coming back um yeah we had one specific question one group like like what's where's the list of all the different groups that i made those pictures from it's like yeah i've got various lists we'll, we'll we'll compile that list to make it easy to find those different groups um who wants to sort of represent the group and just sort of share and you know we've got like nine more minutes just to sort of share yeah uh, I, what, I can, what you guys talked about in your group so i can go quickly ux capabilities peter shared a story about how he jumped into an organization and he had to basically set it up from scratch. And what I summarized was in order to move an organization forward, you just need to start doing the work. And also Peter had mentioned that not only doing the work, but you need to partner and work with the organization. You've got all these smart people, get them into a room and let's work together. And I think part of the challenge, whenever you decide to set up a UX organization, it's, you know, going in and you've got a bunch of those different approaches. You can kind of barge yourself in, you can try to work together. And I think there's a lot of variables there. It depends on the size of your organization, depends on where the organization came from. So there's, there's so many variables. So you're going to have to figure that out once you get into the middle of it, but there definitely are best practices on how to continue to build advocates and, and grow forward. And I hope group, I represented that story correctly. I know Peter, he, he uh, really had a great story. Appreciate that. Cool, yeah, again, thanks for sharing. And again, I could see over time evolving into having folks interested in this thing, having more chances to hang out and just tell stories and then um, other things that we could do on top. So cool. Chris, do you want to do a little recap of the UX communities? You are a smaller group, but uh, what did you guys talk about? Sure. Um, yeah, we just had a few people in our group and um, we had um, Stephen and Vito were newer to Columbus and um, we were talking through any um, potential uh, groups that they maybe will get interested in that area. Um, so we we're putting our, our heads together. We thought Adam may have some um, good connections to, to recommend. Um, there as well. Definitely happy to help there. Good. If, uh, whoever want, who are they that want to connect? Stephen Douglas and uh, Vita. I didn't catch your last name, Vita. Law. Yeah, Law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, yep. And and Vita's with Lexton. I've been talking to other folks at Lexton. Lexton wants to get the help get the the Columbus community back together again. Awesome. Yeah. Let's connect and uh, see what we can do. Yep, I'm lurking you. I'm lurking on LinkedIn and following you right now. So we will meet. Awesome. Nice to meet we were, you. Nice to meet you. We were also wondering if Midwest UX was coming back because it's been a couple of years now. I yeah, need so, to reach out. Oh, sorry. Yeah, again, I, I pinged the folks at Nationwide and they said they haven't heard anything yet from the, the Midwest UX main office. But but yes, we should get Eric, we should get Eric Dahl here with us so he can either tell us yes or no for sure. And if the answer is no, then like, damn it, let's do our own, right? So 
or or figure out how we make ourselves attractive enough to lure them back. Yeah, I, I think mostly it was Eric and the other Midwest UX folks. They were just burnt out. Like I think I think they were burnt out before the pandemic, so they just don't want to do anything, let alone do anything in Ohio. So oh, I see. Um, right. So I, I I think they were just burnt out. Um, how about Joshua? Since you're up, how about the yeah? You, you uh, had a big so group. In the, in the professionalization uh, group, we we talked about. Uh, what does professionalization mean? What's kind of the right analogy? Is it to something like lawyer or accountant, or is it more like a skilled trade, like being a carpenter or an electrician, uh, where there's a, a craft and an apprenticeship model? That's certainly an interesting concept. Uh, we talked about the seeming gap of entry level jobs where you know you can get a job with three years of experience as a UXer, but maybe there's not enough good entry level jobs that lead people along a path. That's definitely a problem. Without that, we can't really ever be a true profession. And we talked a little bit about what what or not what can we do, but we should do some sort of work on standardization of skills and training and working with academia so that if you go study, you know, accounting, I'm back to that example at one place or another, at least everybody kind of gets what you learn. But if you go study UX at one place or another, particularly boot camps, you may learn anything or nothing. So it can't really be a profession when that's going on. So we didn't really come to any conclusions, but we asked a lot of interesting questions because after all, we are UXers. Right. And again, that to me, that the goal is just to find 12 people that actually wanted to spend 15 minutes talking about this thing, right? Because a lot of our other conversations are focused on other things. So, so it's really just finding some folks that want to hang out and talk about it. And then in an ideal world, we find some way to, to advance it, at least for ourselves here in Ohio. So cool. Thanks. Um, Melanie, what did you talk about for career awareness? Sure. So in the career awareness group, we talked about a couple of points, one of being the awareness part itself, you know, when do young people learn about these as career paths, if at all, so building awareness and identity around that. Um, There's a lot of fragmentation within our career path, we're not always sure of what to call ourselves, so that can add to the confusion of choosing it as a career. And then the other one was diversity and inclusion, you know, you, you have people from all walks of life and user experience is about the users and you should not have you know heavily weighted towards one segment or type of person it's it's for everyone so how do we get more people from all walks of life into this field and make sure that they're getting hired and promoted as well great thanks for the recap Um, i popped into the humane tech hub with bryce and matt matt do you want to give a little quick recap yeah, yeah. So we we chatted a bit, somewhat about the community more than the humane tech at times, but that's okay. Uh, it was a good catch up because I haven't seen Keith in a while or talked to him in a while. So, but uh, basically, you know, we talked a little bit about Tristan Harris and some of his work out in Silicon Valley, kind of thinking about you know how that could you know be brought to Ohio and how we could have bigger conversations around you know grassroots growth of you know like different. Um, types of communities, but also just understanding that we're not just going to move past and break things here, but we're actually going to do sustained growth and build institutions that actually help us to maintain, whether it be a digital democracy or to maintain a lot of the things that, you know, we take for granted, I feel like in our culture. So. Cool. Yeah. Again, a little bit, you can see different groups at different levels of philosophical conversation, right? So I want to have, you know, some things for the practical, but also let's, let's think about, you know, a hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, what kind of world do we want to have? Right. So um, great. Thanks for everybody for participating. Um, Since we got one, two more minutes, let me share my screen. We just, with some next steps. And then we'll also just end up for anybody that wants to hang around and chat a little bit more. So um, so what I have as some next steps is I have all of your email address. So you got you guys are all screwed now. I have your email address. Um, so I will do some sort of follow up with a little bit of a summary for even for the folks that can't make it. Uh, I'll try to like edit the video a little bit if people want to watch it. Um, but think about again. You know, this is more of like a volunteer driven thing, right? Like if you really care about one of these topics, we want you to volunteer to help make it happen versus just sit back and wait. 
Um, so you might want to volunteer as an individual. To me, like if you could talk your boss to do joining Ohio X and and putting something in your like in your professional development thing that says I'm going to commit two hours a week to Ohio X, whatever that means, right? Or, you know, like to help organize the conference or whatever, right? To me, that would be great because then you know you, you can get paid to hang out with us, right? If if you can dupe your boss into that, then more power to you. So, um, but it, again, some other folks just said I just just keep me, you know, like send me an email once a month. That's all I need to know, right? So they'll there'll be, be some form of staying informed. Some people are like, what the hell is going on here, Keith? I don't get it. So if you want to just set up a meeting with me or Joshua or Melanie or Mark or even anybody else that you bumped into, uh, happy to chat some more. Um, as Melanie mentioned, like I, we're going to try to like, I'm not going to invent a UX roundtable newsletter. I'm going to say sign up for the Ohio X newsletter. And like if there's a UX job opening, give it to Chris and he'll put it in his newsletter, right? So we're trying to piggyback as much as we can so that we don't have to build up the infrastructure, but let's just piggyback on that. So, you know, hopefully over time we'll have like a, you know, this section of the newsletter will be interesting to you, and hopefully the rest of the Ohio X newsletter will also be interesting. Um, Ohio X has a Slack that not too many people are in it, but if you're into Slack, you know, we, we can we can join that, and I, you know, in the email, I can, you know, send out a link to join the Slack if, if you like hanging out on Slack. Again, Ohio X is a member organization, but when we, when I talk to Chris, like, oh, to be in, to participate in a roundtable, does your company have to be a member? It's like, nope, it's nice gravy if you want to let them know. You know, because there's other benefits. If your company's a member of Ohio X, they might want to sponsor things or whatever. So uh, go ahead and at least at least talk to other folks at your company about what Ohio X is. If they end up joining, that's great. It's not like we get 10% of, we don't get 10% of the, the, the fees. But again, the more folks that are part of Ohio X is good for us. And then of course, there could be lots of suggesting other things that we do. Again, you know, we came up with these three pillars. If we need to go in a different direction, then it's like if five people volunteer and you want to do that other thing, I say go for it, right? So any other comments or things about staying in touch? I just want to say that through community and collaboration, we have synergy. So really excited about today's roundtable. Um, love the idea, the concept, and so so great to meet everybody from in and around Ohio. Awesome. Cool. So we're one one minute over. We lost about 10 people right at the top of the hour. And that is fine. It's amazing that this many people, you know, what 80 people actually registered in the first place. And we had what at least 40 people show up and 20, 20 of you are still here, right? So what is wrong with you? So, <laughs> um, but I will stay on as long as other folks want to chat. I know some people definitely have to drop. So if you have to drop, go, okay. If you want to hang around and chat some more, I'll be here and we can catch up on old times or we can, we can meet and talk about new things. So again, thanks for joining. I'll send you an email. Joshua, you have something? Keith, in your newsletter, uh, don't forget to use the phrase that I stole for the professionalization room about move slow and fix things. Because I think right. it's, it's, it's <laughs> right. a great I think phrase. he actually mentioned that in our breakout group. I just did catch it. Right. There we <laughs> go. I was summarizing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> So yeah, yeah, again, I've used that as an example because some some people say, oh, Ohio X yeah. is great. We want Ohio to be like Silicon Valley. It's like, actually, no, I think we could be better, mm -hmm. right? And I or so so every right, every time Silicon Valley says this is the proper way to do UX, I want to say, like, well, maybe in Ohio X in Ohio, we do it a little bit differently and we think it's better. So that's just one of those those other things that might be interesting. So 